let's do a quick review of Coulomb's law, the fundamental law that describes how point charges exert forces on one another. The most basic version of Coulomb's law looks like this. This says that the magnitude of the force on one charge Q1 due to some other charge Q2 is kq1 q2 over r squared, where r is the distance between them. k is the Coulomb constant, which is just a constant of proportionality that makes all the numbers work out for a particular system of units. In SI units, k is numerically very close to 9 times 10 to the 9th. k can also be expressed in terms of a different constant, epsilon naught, through the relation shown. Whether you see the one or the other depends on what context you're working in. Now, force is a vector, which is to say forces always point in some particular direction. That means that a complete expression of Coulomb's law needs to be a vector expression, which looks like so. This is the force on charge 2 because of charge 1. This little guy, which we call r hat, is a unit vector that points from the thing making the force to the thing feeling the force, from the source to the observation point. Unless you hear otherwise, that'll always be the convention for vectors like that. Now remember what the deal is with unit vectors. They're vectors that point in particular directions but have magnitude 1. Their job is to carry all the information about direction without affecting anything else. You get unit vectors by taking regular vectors and dividing them by their own magnitudes. So if we take the displacement vector from charge 1 to charge 2 and name it the r vector, we can get the r hat unit vector by dividing it by its own length as shown. Now, since unit vectors can be clunky to calculate, you'll often see Coulomb's law written with a little substitution. r hat is equal to the r vector over the magnitude r, so if I just slide that right in, we get what I consider to be a cleaner form of Coulomb's law for actual problems, written in terms of r cubed. This is what you'll see me use most of the time. One last thing, please note that if you're using a vector form of Coulomb's law, you need to pay attention to signage. If one of the charges involved is negative, put in a negative quantity. That'll make all the directions work out so that same sign charges repel and opposite sign charges attract.